Welcome to Hive AV. Today we'll be going over the Hive KP8, the new uh, uh, eight button keypad, and the, the newest addition to the Hive AV family of control products. We'll go over the comparison with the Hive Touch, how to discover the KP8 on a network, and the initial setup. We'll, we'll go over to setting up devices for control, such as displays and integration with Versa and the Hive nodes. And then we'll go over activities such as setting up the button presses and command macros. The Hive AV family consists of the Hive Touch with the Hive AV app, Hive nodes, Versa, and all the Hall technology devices that the Hive Touch controls. It's an all-in-one user interface and AV system controller, and that's what sets it apart from other control devices on the market. Well, the Hive KP8 is like its younger sibling. It too is an all-in-one user interface, eight buttons, keypad, and an, an AV system controller. It's power over Ethernet. It's e control. It's easy setup and use. That's exactly the same as a Hive Touch. KP8 can control switchers, displays, cameras, mics, speakers, all by itself without any assistance from another control processor or, or anything else. And it can do this all over IP. But when you add the Hive nodes, the Hive node IR, the Hive node RS-232, the Hive node Relay, then it can do a lot more. It can do a lot more. And the same when you add Versa, it can control Versa as a switcher. And then it can also use the, that Versa as nodes to control things by RS-232 or IR. All right, let's take a look at the, the keypad itself. Uh, eight buttons on the front. These all illuminate. And there's a little indentation there where the little stickers that come with it can go. And you have various ones, HMI 1, 2, volume up and down, your, your basic stuff. Um, again, this is Decora, so it, it, it's made to fit in most commercial or residential boxes. If you look closely, there's a little pinhole right here. Uh, that pinhole, that's for factory reset. So um, if you can't get to the device webpage uh, and you need to reset the device, just a uh, paper clip and, and stick it right in there for like a couple seconds while it's plugged into power and then it'll reset and you can find it with the utility at that point. And that, that should fix most of the problems. Let's take a quick look at the back. So on the back here, we, we have, uh, you know, uh, obviously this is the network uh, connection uh, is, is capable of POE. Um, up here, you, you see there's a relay. Unfortunately, it's just one relay. So you can open and close it and you can control uh, various devices, um, but stuff like shades and, and motorized blinds, you're probably going to need two relays. And in that case, you're, you're going to, you're going to need a hive node relay, which this can control. Um, so, so plugging it in to, to power, you can see it lights up. And, uh, just so you know, um, it, it does come in demo mode and it's pretty right. The lights will all uh, uh, turn on and, and they'll, they'll go to different colors, but it's not really going to be doing what you want to do uh, programmatically, right? You don't want to, um, to to turn off that demo mode unless you're showing it to a customer or, or, or at some event. And that's about it, really. Thank you. Let's take a look at how to discover the, the Hive KP8 and uh, how to set the IP address. Let's start off with the, the product page. If you navigate to uh, halltechav.com and uh, the Hive KP, you'll, you'll find out basic information, all the specifications. Uh, there's a nice uh, block diagram here. Um, and then under downloads, you have the manual. Uh, and then you have this uh, KP8 device finder. And this little uh, Hall Research device finder uh, uh, software utility. And you click on that. And it just opens a very simple little window here. And then you could hit find devices on, on network. This is really helpful because by default, the, 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 the KP8 is going to have a 192.168.1.50 uh, IP address. And that may not even be in the range of your, 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 your laptop or PC that, that you're using to, to configure it with.
So all you have to do is, is hit this uh, find devices on the network. It's still going to find the device. And then you can click on it and it'll open another window right here where you can either set this to uh, statically to something in your range or, or just simply select DHCP and hit save and reboot. Now you can uh, configure uh, the, the Hive KP8 in a browser, Chrome, Edge, um, but it seems like Firefox um, supports it the best. Um, there's some rendering issues sometimes with Chrome and uh, it seems that there, those re there aren't any rendering issues uh, with, with, with uh, Firefox. So that, that, that's highly recommended. You'll, you'll be presented with a login window and by default, uh, the username and password are admin admin. This is set up to be identical as the, the hive, uh, touch. And you can see here, uh, here's the hive touch and you have devices and you come in here and you'd set up your devices. Um, and then you would come into activities. Uh, you would set up your, your audio, uh, your power, your presets, and then maybe you would, uh, do some settings before you're complete and, and it's ready for the end user. We, we tried to keep things consistent. And we, so we simplified all the menus. So you start with devices, add device, uh, commands, uh, and then uh, uh, keypad commands. Uh, then we're gonna go to activities, which is gonna be uh, setting up all the buttons. And then we'll finish everything with settings. You, you'll, you can start setting up everything from here, but it'll be easier for me to show you um, with the full configuration file that should be the default for most of these units. And then you can go to a, a restore configuration and then just select the, the, the new default that you down and then just hit restore like that. And then it'll just take a couple minutes. Now, now you'll see that it's populated with a, a lot of all technology devices, hive node and hive devices. Um, so the KP8, you know, it integrates with the, the Hive nodes so that it can control uh, relays, RS-232 and IR for a whole array of devices. Um, it can uh, control the uh, Aversa uh, so that, that you can control switching uh, and routing with uh, the Versa S and Versa Rs. And then you can also use the Versa 4K like a node for RS-232 and, and an IR. And you can use, uh, 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 and here also we have uh, brought in uh, the, the camera. And there's no IP addresses right now. You would need to fill those in for the actual devices on your network, uh, uh, but the ports are all there. You have all these ports. So it, it's pretty simple. If you wanted to add a new connection, you would just come in here. Uh, you would type in, uh, let's just say display uh, sharp, and you would put in um, an IP address of the display. The, has already been set up and um then you put in the the port number here uh of whatever it is and and you would save this and that that would save a connection you can see here's our sharp right there and then if you wanted any to use any of these uh, if you have them on the network uh, then you would simply go in and you would select this and you put in the ip address uh, of the unit and then next you go on to commands right and, uh, and a bunch of commands have already been populated for you as well. And we, as you can see, we have uh, our Hive uh, nodes, right? For uh, opening and closing relays and uh, our Versa uh, group ID switching. So this is a way that you, on the Versa decoders, you can set that group ID. So it switches to that new source. Here are the camera presets. So I would, I would connect the Sharp on and off to the Hive Node RS-232. For instance, I could connect it to the, the, the Versa 4K RS-232, right? And then you can see here, um, I just connected that um, uh, up right there, and I would go through the rest for that. And then the same with the, the PTZ camera. I would go in and I would say, okay, let's you know set this up and connect that to the, um, the 1080 PTZ camera there. So you just kind of go back, go through and, and connect up your commands uh, to the uh, connections that you just made uh, in the previous tab. And it's the, the standard order operations. So great, we, we have all of our, our, our commands here set. If we need to add uh, a new command, we would hit this add button um, and I would put in, um, you know, uh, uh, power toggle and the, the command for that, whatever that is. Um, and now we added a command for that. 
These are going to be commands for added devices that are external to the keypad. But the keypad commands, they're going to actually be sent to the device itself. Most of these have to do with the, the LED lights so that you can change the colors. And so here you can see uh, it, it's already associated with sys command. If, if you need additional commands that aren't on here, you can always add a new one here. Uh, the manual has a full list of the whole API. Oh, I almost forgot something here. You know, uh, you can see at the, this this line ending here, uh, the slash x zero d slash x zero a, and 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 you can see that over here as well. You know, for at the end here, that's a carriage return. And so the way that the 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 KP eight uh, is able to send a carriage return and line feed, which is is required for most ASCII uh, commands, is by doing a switch, which is that 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 slash x. And then the, the hexadecimal for carriage return zero D and the hexadecimal for uh, line feed zero A. Now, if the commands you're sending are hex, then you don't need to do that. You can come down in here and you see power on or off, and you can see it's in hex. So each uh, you know character uh, hex value needs to be preceded by the slash X. And now we can go come over here to uh, activities next, right? You can see I already built some out and make things easy. This is the keypad uh, buttons, you know, one through eight. And if I click on the pencil, you can see um, how I have this set up already. So basically you have a, a, a all LED red. So this is to make sure that none of the LEDs are red at, at the beginning when it's first pressed. Um, and then it's going to uh, close the relay one. And I, I really could have any commands in here. Um, I could add in, um, if I wanted to, uh, say the power, uh, the sh sharp uh, uh, power fan right there, right? And you can see that. Uh, and if I need to move that so that it's in a place, I can put it right next to there. And there's a little delay in between uh, the two commands. And then next you can see uh, uh, another delay. And the LED uh, uh, is going to turn to 100%. And even this one, we could probably put this up at, uh, well, we'll put this at the end. Yeah. And, and then again, we're, we're going to, uh, we close the relay, meaning that the, the screen, say, came down or something, uh, or motorized lift. Um, and then we're, we're opening it back up. And that's known as a pulse. And uh, most uh, motorized switches, that's what they want to see. Um, and this is how uh, we get there for that. And then you're going to hit save changes and then those commands have been saved. Um, so what I'm doing there is I'm turning this button red when, when power is on and then I'm, and then I'm power off. You can see here I'm doing, uh, this all I'm doing off. So, so, uh, so basically, um, when the power is on, there'll be a red button on and when power is off, that it'll turn it off. Right. And it'll, it'll stay on for, for a little while there. Um, you know, uh, up to 10, 10 seconds, and, and then it'll go off. Um, so that that's just the, the logic that I put in there, but you can do whatever you want here. And again, you can you re relabel these um, however you need. And if you need to do a factory reset, uh, go ahead and do that. Um, also very important, you're gonna wanna shut off this demo mode. Um, by default, it comes with the demo mode on, uh, and you'll, you'll see it with all the lights. So it's very important that you shut that demo mode off. Uh, because it it will it'll uh, interfere with with all your button presses up here. Some of the other things that I've done here uh, is uh, that I want to uh, show is this volume up and down. You can see here is the volume up command, and we have a volume down command, and then this mute toggle. And then this is also going to be important later. It's going to send out a mute on, and, it, and I'll show you how that is is toggled in, in the next uh, section. Buttons too, um, have, I have really two, two main purposes, right? You can set up these uh, with a macro command that, that can just be uh, triggered by the schedule, right? Not by actual button press, or uh, it could be used for a toggle. So here you see I have my, my sharp mute off and on the other page I have the sharp mute on, right? And that's what these secondary buttons are for. Um, and here, this is under button settings. This is where you can set uh, the, the behavior of those buttons. By default, it's momentary. You press the button, it sends whatever is in buttons one. But if I change this to repeat, right, 
for volume up and volume down. Now when I press and hold the volume up or volume down, it'll, it'll repeat that volume up and repeat that volume down so the user doesn't have to sit there and press the button. And then number on, under eight, you can see here uh, that we have this toggle key, right? So this is where I'm gonna be able to create my mute on and off, my mute toggle. You press it here, mute on, press it here, mute off. And then, and, and this is what uh, says, okay, this is how it's not gonna be momentary. It's not gonna be repeat. We're gonna to toggle those two keys. That's what we're gonna do. So now we have our, our, our devices and our activities all set up. All of our buttons are set. Um, and, and, and really at this point, you would do some testing uh, with the unit. Um, you might wanna do some final uh, system uh, configurations. And backing up, you don't necessarily, the settings gonna happen at any point. If you need to, to change the network settings, um, you can either do it from that utility or, or you can do it from right here. Um, um, you come into settings here. Um, this is where you can change the user name and, and, and password uh, from the default admin admin. Uh, you could download the current configuration. And this is important. If I'm all done here and I did all my testing, it might be good for me to, to download a, a copy of this configuration. It's in XML. And then I can upload it back up. And this downloaded uh, file, it's, uh, it, it could also be used if you feel more comfortable with just editing all the parameters here. If, you're, if you feel uh, like you, you can, it it's, might be easier for you to go through and make changes through the XML, like copy or uh, replace and stuff like that. Sometimes it's easier to do that in here or, or filling in the parameters for the network uh, or any of these things. You know, you can download it, edit it, and, and 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 put it back in, or just download it as a backup, or download it if you have a bunch of keypads that you need to upload the the file to, like a bunch of cookie cutter rooms that that, that all have the same equipment, for instance. Um, so it, it's a great tool, um, and 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 here you can restore that configuration, right? So if it, you can take what you downloaded, if you edited it, or if it's a new keypad. And, and a cookie cutter, you just, just restore it. Or this is where you would take that file that you downloaded from, from, from the website that I showed you before and upload it here with all the drivers for um, all the Hall Technology devices. You can uh, uh, reset everything uh, to default. This is a full factory reset. And here you can do a, a soft reboot um, at the, at, as well. Um, the, as far as the factory reset, if you can't get into web page for any reason, there's a little hole on the front and, and, and that's the place you'll want to just push in and, and, uh, uh, and it'll, it'll reset it back to those original values. You shouldn't have to do the firmware upgrade. Um, if for some reason you have a unit with older firmware, uh, support will, will help you, uh, update it to, to the latest. Thank you for joining me for this short tutorial about the Hive. Uh, KP8 keypad. The whole is truly greater than the sum of its parts. If you want to find out more about this product, please go to the product page at the, the Hall Technology website. Thank you.